A unique art show is making its only U.S. appearance right here in Delaware. This groundbreaking exhibition showcases dozens of pieces of priceless art that at one point through the years had been stolen and sold on the black market before being recovered by a special division of Italian law enforcement. years, Lieutenant Colonel Massimo Rossi and his art recovery team have investigated, tracked down, and reclaimed art that was looted, stolen, or illegally exported from Italy. In China and Japan, in Switzerland, in France, and uh, all around the world, really. We work in order to protect all the cultural heritage. Guardia di Finanza is a law enforcement agency under the authority of the Minister of Economy and Finance and part of the Italian Armed Forces. Rossi is the chief in command of the art recovery team tasked with locating and retrieving stolen antiquities and artifacts. It's a long investigation, long work, a long, uh, it's a very difficult job. Yeah, sometimes it's dangerous, sometimes it's dangerous. Italy is home to 60% of the world's art treasures. According to Italian authorities, Italy loses 5,000 pieces of art every year to illegal smuggling. People are excited, uh, they're very curious to see this exhibit. The fact that it is all art that has been stolen and recovered, I think is a very uh, fascinating concept to people. Each piece in this collection is accompanied by an account explaining its interesting history, beginning with the story of its original creation, the story of its theft, and the story of its recovery. For Rossi, the exhibit is a testament to his work and love for his country. I'm very proud to be part of it. Everybody can join some artifact that they've never seen before. That's important to see this. The exhibit will be on display here at the Grand Opera House until December 21st. In Wilmington, I'm Veronica Dudo for MeTV. Thank you, Veronica. I'm now with John Pastor as the former state leader for International Economic Development. But most importantly, he is the organizer of the exhibit Treasures and Tales of Italy, which is showing only in Wilmington. And uh, we've, we just talked a little bit and you expected the first question. Why Wilmington? Uh, Wilmington, because it's uh, not New York, not Washington, not Los Angeles. And the government of Italy, Guardi di Finanza, is trying to promote Italian heritage and culture in the smaller cities and Wilmington was the ideal location for it. And it's a gorgeous location. I, I mean, where you're showing the art, at the Opera House. That's right? correct. It's just, in, in, if, if you have not been there, coming to see the Opera House itself mm -hmm. is an event. This just makes it more special. Uh, talk about how these pieces were recovered. Okay. Guardi di Finanza has an art recovery group, which is very similar to the FBI's art recovery team. They have been in business for more than 100 years, and they travel in Italy mostly and all over the world recovering art that was claimed to be Italian but was relocated illegally. So they identify a piece of art and they take the necessary legal action to recover that art and return it to Italy. Now the uniqueness of this exhibition is that most of these, all of these artifacts have never left Italy before. So their purpose has been to recover art for the Italian people. This is the first time they have allowed 120 pieces to leave Italy to show it in the United States. And Delaware is where we're primarily showing it at the Opera House. And a smaller exhibition runs concurrently at the University of Delaware Museum. I would imagine that there are some big institutions and some big museums around the country that are looking at Wilmington with envy at this point. Yes. How were you able to get it here and keep it out of their hands? Well, as I mentioned to you before, it takes personal relationships. And Senator Harris McDowell from Wilmington uh, was a key instrument in this because he kept on with the relationship with the Guardia di Finanza and actually negotiated the deal with the generals to allow it to leave Italy. And basically that's how it was done. You went to Italy, negotiated, and a year later we have this, these artifacts here in Delaware. And, and when does this run to? 
This runs through December 21 at the Opera House and December 7 at the University of Delaware. Is, is there a good chance that this is going to be it, that these will not be on display in this country again? There is a good chance, yes. And we would like to get more. This is proof of concept in a way for us, Delaware, city of Wilmington, because we're trying to promote the Renaissance in the city. That's why it's at the Opera House and the Italian government. So what we would like to do is we would like to, we have proven that this can be done and we would like to have new pieces next year that are of much higher value. Oh, and you're going to, uh, so you're going to bring good. it back again oh, next yes, year. Yes, yes. And this would be the only place that this it's going be to be the only shown? Place. That's amazing. So, well, congratulations. This is, a, this is a great thing you're doing for Wilmington and for the art community in, in the Philadelphia area because um, right. there's art lovers in Philadelphia that Very I'm good. sure will make it over and in South Jersey. Uh, it is called the Treasures and Tales of Italy's Guardia di Finanza, uh, the art recovery team. This is the, uh, their, the art FBI in Italy who went out and got these pieces, some of them, as you said, 700 years old. And the only place you can see this is at the Opera House in Wilmington, Delaware. Mr. Pastor, thank, thank you, you very so much. much for being here. John thank Pastor, you. the former state leader for international economic development. I'll keep giving that title. And also the organizer of this exhibit. We'll be right back.